Yeah, I was um, involved with CAS from very early on when Simon um, called some people together to found CAS. Um, I was one of the people he contacted initially because I had been working on programming education before CAS started already. I work in a um, computing education research group and my interest in that is to um, create tools for, to, to teach and learn programming. So we have been building environments for kids to program for a number of years previously already and um, that is how I became involved in the CAS group. So when Simon um, initially got a group of people together to what became CAS eventually, um, he looked around at people who were doing some work in the area and through that work that we've been doing, it's a system called Greenfoot that is designed to teach um, kids programming. Um, I had an interest in that area already and uh, CAS being established and set up was a fantastically um, great you know, development for us because yeah. we felt like you know, shouting alone in the dark there, there wasn't really a gr an infrastructure to, to, to reach teachers at the time um, and uh, disseminating, populating the tools and providing the instruction for teachers was almost impossible because there was no infrastructure at all in the country um, to contact teachers and talk to them. And so when CAS was founded, or before, when, when initially just Simon loudly stated the problem and said, you know, there's something wrong here, we all said, you know, yes, that is exactly what we've been thinking. So um, it was very clear that he was onto something there and that it matched really well with, with our interest and my interest to um, get, get kids to learn programming and give them the, the means and the tools to learn programming. So um, CAS was really, you know, a heaven sent development for us to actually um, give us an opportunity to talk to teachers and get it into schools and get it out there. Yeah, the, the screencasts were actually for, for me in somewhat sort of surprisingly popular because I hadn't really thought that through very much before I did them. Um, that was a spur of the moment thing where you know, I was sitting there between Christmas and New Year and had a, had a few days pause and I thought, um, you know, I've been going around for years and I, I've been doing a lot of workshops for both kids and teachers and I've been talking to many teachers in these workshops face to face. Um, but there were always um, people asking me for resources, for workshops, for things and, and you know, you can't reach them all. You can only, you know, face to face works very well. It's a nice interaction, but it doesn't scale very well. You know, you can only be in so many places at once. And so then I thought I'd just record pretty much a variation of, of um, teaching material that I've been using with kids and material I've been um, talking to teachers about. And I, hadn't, I didn't have a great plan. There was no, there was no real you know, thought out plan behind it, but they very quickly became very popular. And so and th that's great to see, of course, that it's very motivating and keeps you going. And if, if you get feedback, if you see people actually watching it, it's good fun. Oh, yeah, no, we certainly have a lot more and much better interaction with teachers. Um, just to have a means, a mechanism, how to get in contact with teachers. So uh, I, I have been um, in Canterbury where, where I live and work for, for, for many years now, but f for a long time I had no contact directly with any teachers in any schools, and that has changed. It has changed radically. You know, there's um, Teachers come to me, they feel, you know, they, they can find me, I can go to teachers, I can offer things. It has uh, changed the interaction with teachers fundamentally. There's a lot more happening now than there was before. And just because CAS as a platform exists to, uh, to build it on. And I expect that within the next few years also then interaction with the kids will change. You know, when, when the first um, wave of kids come through school into our universities that have gone through this, I think we will see a change in, in the kids coming into university as well in a few years. Yes, yes, it is, and that, that makes it so nice. It's, it's actually a very rare case, I think. I don't think I've seen that anywhere else to that extent where you know, people don't say, you know, we need to get something done, so write a report about it and write a funding proposal and you know, employ some people and get a website set up, you know, which, which is sort of the usual pattern in many organizations. Here, if someone has an idea, someone will just do it. You know? and, and before you know, the formalities kick in, there, there's so many people here who feel so passionate about it, who just sit down and do stuff. Um, you know, and so without very much of a great overall plan initially, there was just, you know, this, this let the thousand flowers bloom. There was just
popping things up all over the place, different people doing different things and somehow still having a cohesion of, of getting you know, a, a common view through. It's a joy to work with. Well, I have to say thank you so much, Ryan. You're welcome. Thank you.